is Lee Chess Plays. It's a weekly event. I see 42 challenges here. So let's uh, tee one up here. Destroya, you're up first. Hope everyone's having a fantastic weekend. I should play a move since I have the white pieces. All right, and Destroya's ready. I like to see that. Yes, good luck to you. Okay, what should I play here? Let's just stick with Knight F3 to start. I have no game plan right now, other than just making good developing moves and going with it. Uh, I guess I'll play a mainline Italian game, or, or possibly a two knights. Depends what uh, Destroya prefers. Okay, well, let's let's see what happens in the mainline. Knight G5. These always lead to entertaining games. What's up, Imha? Hello, Lapare. I see you both on Twitch. Greetings to our, our YouTube audience as well. As always, let's give a check here. Hello, Aryan. What's up, Luke Shonia? Uh, what's my Elite Chess username? It's Fins. F-I-N-S. Feel free to send me a challenge. I'm going to play Bishop D3. I actually have way more experience with Bishop E2, but I believe this is the better move here, quite honestly. So I don't think there's a reason not to play it. So let's do it. Hello, Dave89. And this is the point, that you can use the E4 square for the knight when black inevitably kicks you. What's up, cheeseburgers? Greetings to you. I'm going to have to open my door here for a second because it is actually pretty hot. Give me a moment, guys. It's pretty hot, but we also got a storm just before I went live. And I got kind of caught in the downpour <laughs> as I was walking. But it's all good. Hello, Purple Mustache as well. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of viewers here right off the bat. Love it. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. This is uh, one of the things I look forward to every week. And shout out to Lee Chess for putting this on. Uh, shout out to the mods, Lopare, also No Joke Chess, if No Joke is out there. Out there. Uh, Numeroid as well, often a mod that's in the chat. And I think it's so cool that we're on both platforms too, YouTube and Twitch simultaneously. Let's go Bishop E2. Okay, so now I'm actually going to move this in an effort to go D3. I got to unwind a little bit. Maybe I could have played B3 as well, but I think I feel a little bit better when this pawn is pushed because I can restrain black structure if black plays F5 and E4. Thank you to, to Maples for subbing to the, the Lee Chess Twitch channel with, with Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you can use it once per month on any streamer for free. This might be a little sketchy after F5. I'm still going to play it. I think I can take here if, if needed. So yeah, if you happen to have Amazon Prime, you um, have built into your Prime membership the ability to, to sub to any streamer, any channel, completely for free once per month. And still a surprising amount of people don't know that. So I like to see the, the Primes being used, especially on chess streamers. Okay, so we're getting some trades. And yeah, I was thinking of popping this pawn off once all these swaps occur. I think Black had to take with a queen there, although Bishop F3 wasn't looking too hot. All right. Um, let's go Bishop G4 here. We'll send this into position. I guess there's a move Destroya has here to maybe make it semi-interesting. Mm, probably doesn't do much, but I was thinking maybe Queen G5 there was a decent move. All right, let's take, and I'll go queen f3. So up two pawns here, just trying to bring this in for a, a soft landing. Let's line up with the queen. Threaten bishop takes g7. I can swipe another pawn here. I don't see why not. That's also a double attack. Let's go for it. Some loose pieces in the black position. Remember, undefended pieces are absolute magnets for tactics. So we like to target undefended pieces. That's why it's the title of my first chess fundamentals video on my channel. Undefended pieces. You can often see masters kind of building in redundant protection, so overprotecting their pieces in pawns just so something loose doesn't occur later. All right. Thank you, Destroyup. Yeah, thank you for the game. Let's take a quick look. I think uh, 
I think knight d5 is one of the moves here, the main move. Yeah, so you're you're still following theory at this point, as was I. Okay, I was actually the first one to depart in a major way, knight bc3. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with how to play this from here. Looks like they like to play knight g3 or rook e1. So let's try to figure out why. So it doesn't look like knight, BC, knight b to c3 is a terrible move, but uh, castles or knight f4. Knight f4 would target the bishop. Yeah, I'd probably play bishop e2. There's a couple master games with castling here. Uh, perhaps most of your chances are connected to getting in that f5 move. I think that stands to reason because if you can't, if you can't gain space, push me back, create some inconvenience in my setup, then it's hard to see how black's going to get compensation. So yeah, maybe you got to look in that direction, trying to get f5 in. That's just my casual observation, but what I've seen to be a thing in this variation. So yeah, thanks for the game. I think uh, especially after you lost that pawn on e5, it was pretty much downhill from there. Although honestly, I think this is already going in the wrong direction. Uh, better move order for me here is to take this way. Aha. Uh -huh. That's because if you take with the queen to defend here, I can throw this move in. And you do not have the d6 square available for your queen, so you can't guard this. It's a nice little move order ploy. All right, thank you for the game. We are over 50 challenges now. I love Hey, Lopare. The mod getting in. Are you sure you didn't rig it, Lopare, so you get a game? I know you would never do that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Lopare, one of our mods. Uh, hello, Adam on YouTube asks, hi, John. Way late in the day, but what did you make of the candidates? I think Magnus will, will Magnus play Jan? Yeah, you know, apparently he's got this July 20th deadline to decide. So, you know, a week and a half from now, in theory, we, we may know 100%. Um, you know, I'm really of two minds. I mean, I, in my heart, I think he's going to defend. I just think it would be odd if he didn't. I, I can't really envision that scenario. However, I do follow this uh, Norwegian chess journalist, Tarjai Svensson, on Twitter. And he's a guy who's been tracking Magnus and reporting on Magnus his entire chess career, pretty much. Um, even going back to when he was a lesser known player in Norway. And... I got to get my wording right because I don't want to like spread misinformation, but I believe Tari I said in a tweet that he thinks there's like a 15%. I don't know how he came to this number. He thinks there's like a 15% chance that Magnus would defend against Jan. I guess if it's like the same type of format as in December in the previous world championship um, and many of the, you know, conditions and sponsors and whatnot, prize fund maybe were to remain the same. He thinks there's a very low chance that Magnus would defend. And with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, I think it's even further a uh, you know kind of tricky issue. Even though uh, Jan has has taken a pacifist approach, um, I still think politically it's it's going to be a sensitive subject when you've got a, a Russian player competing for the world champion championship. So I don't know. I mean, the the sentiment seems to be that he will defend, and again, I believe he will. But that's, that's something that kind of a, a Magnus insider almost, someone who's like very well-versed in how Magnus and his team operate and has reported on him for years. I mean, he's quite knowledgeable. That's what he's saying. But what do you guys think? I'd be curious what you guys feel. Kind of the fun of it, right? Like it's... <laughs> Total speculation right now. All right, so now I can win this pawn. Lopari has given me this pawn. I'm just thinking if I want to insert... There's even knight takes c4, but I think I should take with the bishop. e5, by the way, that move I played. Kind of a typical Jinji move, in fact. Um, threatening e4. And we don't mind the capture en passant, because this becomes weak for white. What Twitter account is it? Tarii Svensson. T -A -R J I E I. If you search Tarii, you'll probably find him. Okay, so this is a threat. I think I'm going to take. So I could take with the queen. How do I feel about that? I could also play d5, but he's maybe ready to do this. I think I should take, actually. Yeah, let's capture.
My king is actually fairly safe here, I think. Um, yeah, I don't see any immediate danger. Famous last words. Okay, I was a little more worried about rook takes. Uh, queen takes, rather, than rook takes. Because this one, I feel I can play bishop d5 at minimum. Although that allows rook e7. Eh. Ah, let's play it. Let's play it. We'll try to target this knight on f3. Oh, did I blunder? No. Fortunately, I did not. It's close, though. I thought I allowed c4 for a second. But I take it. I'm on the queen. Oh, is that the... Really, Cheeseburger? You got a, a tactic on chess tempo with one of my games. Rook 8 to d7. If you wouldn't mind sending me that, I'd be curious. Or if you know who the opponent was, I'd be curious what game that was. I hope you got it right. <laughs> okay, and now maybe knight c4. Yeah, let's throw that in. Rook d3, I have bishop e4. So it looks like trouble for Lopari. That rook just got all snarled. I don't know that you can link it here, but um, you could always whisper it to me if you want. All right, bishop h6, counterattacking. If I take, that doesn't do a whole lot immediately. This rook is pinned, so I'm not like super keen to take it right away. I don't need to, so let's go here. Mm-hmm. Now I guess I will take. Okay. And I do have to watch this, to be fair. This is one thing about the Jinji. You sometimes get a little um, sidetracked with your pieces. Now let's just try to get back the queen back in the game. It's still a little bit scary even here. I mean, I have to dodge a few tactics here and there. Lopari is fighting valiantly, but I think I'm going to get him unless I, unless I flag somehow. Ay, ay, ay. He's fast. Lopare, I had, I had no idea you had that speed. Thank you for the game. Uh, let's just check real quick if you had any chances after things opened up a little bit. I actually think you might have had some chances. Yeah, I don't know about my decision in hindsight to play E5. I was pretty happy with that move at the time. But the computer doesn't actually say I should recapture. I think it's important in the engine's eyes, and it's silicon eyes here, to prevent e4. Yeah, so maybe I should have played like knight e4, queen a4. That's a typical move as well. Black's trying to put pressure on these pawns long term. So although I think the setup you chose is a little passive, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I could have played this better, and I think you had chances. I think you definitely had some something to work with. I thought maybe take with the queen here. Looks like it's equal either way, according to the computer. Ooh, rook g4 is a good move. Rook g4. That wasn't even on my radar, I got to be honest. That is plus three. Ooh, so I might have been losing. It's from B Bartholomew de Fermian from 2011, Manhattan Open. Ah, yes. Yeah, game where I beat uh, Grandmaster Nick de Fermian. That has a cool sequence at the end. It probably shows you the... The final mating sequence. Very nice. I was proud of that game. That's one of my better games I've ever played. Rook g4. Wow. Going on the attack. And if takes, you can take on g6. Wow. Look at this. King h8. And then calmly bring the rook in. Rook e1. Wow. No regard for material. No regard for getting the bishop back. Just rook e1. <laughs> I guess threatening rookie seven. And black is busted. If I guard th this square, you check. And then you bring the rook into a different square. And the engine says I'm toast. I have no pawn protection on my king. I'm up a rook and a bishop, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> that is a nasty line. Might be something interesting to look into. Okay, thank you very much.
before the game. Yeah, I think even after this, it was a little sketchy for me. If you had more time, you might have been able to, to do something with that. All right, on to the next one. Let's fire up another game here. Tuluton Cat, you are up. Good luck to you. Adam, who asked that question about Magnus, says, yeah, I think Magnus will defend. Would have liked to see Ding play. Ooh, B3, okay. Uh, let's go G6. I thought the standard was great for a mostly neutral viewer. Rapport's aggression impressed. Yeah, Rapport always comes to play, right? You know, even if he's not having the best tournament, he still likes to throw down. You got to appreciate that. Oh, thank you, Nuwanda. Thank you very much. I am constantly humbled by this game, so. We stand on the shoulders of giants. I mean, what I've learned in chess is in large part because of uh, the great players of the past. Um, players I've looked up to, mentors I've had. So this, this is a game that will humble you in a hurry. <laughs> if you have any sort of ego about your play. I think you have to have some kind of ego to perform well, but you also have to keep things in perspective always. Okay, interesting decision. Do I take here? I think I should because although we both have this structure where the middle squares are weak, I am more likely to occupy this square than my opponent is to occupy d5. And that's because white developed the knight to d2. So I'm probably going to play this knight into d4 relatively soon. I will look for a good moment to do it, though. What time control do you think is the most bang for your buck in terms of chess improvement? Great question. I tend to think it's 15 plus 10. I think 10 plus 0 is a little bit fast. That's probably a popular answer you'll, you'll get, 10 plus 0. Um, may, yeah, maybe 10 plus 5, as Ving Vindictive put in the chat. But 15 plus 10 has always been my recommendation. It's funny because in a tournament, that would be considered very, very fast. But uh, online, the standards are a bit different. Why not bishop g4 and get rid of the knight first? Well, white has this knight backing it up, so I'm not sure that would accomplish a whole lot. I'm mostly content to play improving moves here. Um, thinking about this one, or I might go knight d4 now. Let's actually play knight d4 now. Maybe this rook will prove useful here. I don't know, though. I could have played that there and kind of seen how white responds. What is OTB minimum? Well, to classically rate an over-the-board game, I'd actually be curious what the FIDE minimum is. Um, I know for U.S. Chess Federation, it's it's around 30 minutes. 30 minutes per side is like the least amount of time that they will rate a game. FIDE, I'm not actually sure. I mean, the pretty much the fastest that people play regularly is 90 plus 30. 90 minutes with a 30-second increment. But I would imagine you can probably FIDE rate maybe even slightly faster games than that. Someone will know in the chat. Yeah, see, here's where I wish this rook was already here. Do I have any tricks? Like, can I take and then bishop f5? Doesn't quite work. Um, yeah, so let's just go here. Okay, now I'm really thinking about this. I think this will work at this point. Because when I play bishop f5, I'm going to be unleashing the rook down the file as well. So let's capture. What's up, Maxim Lazarus? Thank you very much. Weibo says, I heard Fide is one hour, but I might be wrong. That's a good question. I haven't really thought about it before because 90 plus 30 is just such a standard time control. You sometimes see tournaments that have a secondary time control. Um, three time controls is very rare as they have in the candidates in the world championship. That's, that's super rare. You don't see that in amateur tournaments hardly ever. It's just too much time. Let's go here again. So I'm ready to unleash a bunch of different discoveries. All sorts of different stuff here. Am I playing viewers? Yes, I am. Yes, anyone can challenge. My username is Fins. You just have to challenge to a 3-0 game. Rated or casual, it's up to you. 
Facts on YouTube says 30 plus 30 is lowest in India. Uh-huh. Yeah, 30 plus 30 is a good time control, too. Um, again, fast for over-the-board games, but if you're looking for uh, bang for your buck online, I think that's pretty good. Ooh, and now I can capture here. Take this. Mm -hmm. Let's back this up. I guess I'll go attack F2. If Rook F1, I had Knight D2. So further pain here ahead for my opponent. When I might get a... Uh, Almost a smothered type of checkmate here. Um, thinking if I can pull something off, that's kind of cool. I think this move actually works, which is funny. Let's do it. I'm going to give up my rook. All right, thanks for the game, Tulatan Cat. So I was thinking if rook takes king up, it's hard for white to stop queen check followed by queen e1. Because even if the uh, bishop moves... Even if this bishop moves to give, give the white king space, it moves to a square that takes away the flight square from the, from the king. So we get a nice uh, dovetail mate. Dovetail or swallow's tail? I always confuse the two. <laughs> so maybe the engine won't quite like queen h2, but it's completely winning as well. Um, so yeah, Tulaton Cat, I thought your opening was a little bit passive. I know you played b3, bishop b2, but you probably don't want to be this defensive. Yeah, and I think c4 too. I was pointing out in the game how black has to be better here because I have access to the d4 square at any point, but your knight is on the wrong route to get to d5. I mean, you might even consider trying to do something like that if you can engineer it, but that's hard to do when e4 is, is loose. So, yeah, I think your opening setup probably should be rethought. Thank you for the game. Okay, Edmund Chess, you're up. Thanks to everyone challenging today. We got a lot of challenges. Oh, Gold Cat, I see you down there, Gold Cat. Are you uh, stalking me as a cat would, looking for your opportunity to strike? <laughs> Shout out to Gold Cat, one of the toughest opponents I face regularly on Lee Chess plays. Uh, what do I want to do against this one? Let's play another Fianchetto system. Okay. Maybe we'll transpose to like uh, a Dutch type position. I'll try to clamp this square. All right, so I think my opponent's trying for e4. That looks pretty clear. So do I want to stuff the knight in on e4? Probably. But I think that makes a lot of sense here. White can't take with the knight. They would... Okay, they can take with the knight, but they're going to lose a piece. <laughs> take back... Uh... Be honest. I'm going to believe you. If you type in the chat right now, I will believe you if you say you honestly misclick that and you meant to take with your bishop <laughs> but i want to hear it from you okay too late now i guess <laughs> i was trying to interrogate edmund chess a little bit <laughs> it wasn't to be though let's play d6 if check here i can go g6 No take backs yet. <laughs> oh, another take back request. I think White's just trolling now. I still remember you misclicked Queen F3 versus me and gave me your queen. <laughs> I don't quite remember that, but. Rook B1. Oh, he wants to go. He wants to go here. I gotcha. Oh no, d5. What am I going to do? <laughs> and now there's a lot of heat coming down here and here. Oof. That is a check. And now we just got to get in with our queen to h3 and deliver mate. Such a common pattern, right? When they've compromised their pawns like this, and you've got a bishop sitting, controlling their king's movement on the opposite color as to the pawn structure. You just got to get the other 
heavy piece in position. There's all sorts of mating nets that can happen as a result of that. Okay, so my opponent might be trying to disrupt that somehow, but I don't see a whole lot of salvation because this square is covered. Oh, maybe you, I probably should have gone there. That was more accurate. Now let's uh, take here. Yeah, queen f5 would have prevented that defense. How to play with me? Send me a challenge. F-I-N-S is my username. You can search me on uh, Lee Chess. So yeah, feel free to send me a challenge. And you'll get put in a pool of players that I'm randomly selecting from. Um, what to do now? Knight e4, g5 looks good. Let's go g5. Even though it gives this up, we're gonna we're just gonna batter our way through here, guys. This bishop is an absolute monster. On a relative basis, this is the strongest piece on the board by far. It's not even close. Okay, and now the king is open again. If I check here, the queen takes. But if I check here, that should be mate in a matter of moves. I can also check here. That's probably even quicker. What does my name mean, if anything? It is a, uh, a Jimmy Buffett song called Fins. And I just happened to be listening to it at the time that I um, made the account. Okay, White is in full troll mode here. Giving me unlimited time. They do know how the buttons work. But it's time to resign. So hopefully they know how that, that button works. <laughs> I thought it was because you were born with a fin. <laughs> People occasionally ask if it's like because I, I like the Miami Dolphins. It's running up my time quite a bit. Okay. Yeah, don't do that in the future admin chest when there's people waiting. Um, we want to get to as many games as possible. Thank you for the game, though. GG. All right. Royal Flush, you're up next. 1898. Let's play uh let's play D4 in this one. Good luck, Royal Flush. We played a couple times. Yeah. I think I remember this game. Are you there, Royal? Okay, guess not. Royal Flush is AFK. So let's go on to the next person per pixel. Good luck to you. We played one game in the past. Ah, yes. This is a game where you were better. I remember this one. You were better in the middle game. Yeah, shout out to Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> I mean, it's such a dumb story for a username, right? But, like, I'm just stuck with it. <laughs> I've had fins for too long. Let's go here. Okay, interesting setup. Interesting. Queen d2. Usually an awkward square. However, per pixel does know that you can fianchetto with this setup. Let's see if per pixel... Yeah, I, I like how they're playing this. Because knight takes e4 would otherwise be a threat here. But with the pawn on f3, they can protect against that. So we have an interesting position here. I think per pixel does their study. They do their chess homework. All right. Um, I'm just going to go bishop e6. How many challenges? I have over 50. I can't tell exactly how many, but over 50 at the moment. Let's bring this queen into the mix. Got a pressure here. Rook fc8. You don't want to overreact to the pawn push on this wing, although that is optically dangerous. Uh, in these opposite side castle situations, one of the worst things you can do is try to push too many pawns around your own king. Remember that, guys. Let's go here. This slows white down a little bit. I actually think that's probably the wrong order of pawns to push there. I think h5 would have been better. 
specifically so I can't set up this roadblock. That's a, a common dilemma, like which pawn to push between the G and the H. Now I should have a pretty good attack. I'm thinking of where to move this knight, knight b4 or knight d4. Both are tempting. Knight b4 is the most direct move. It threatens to take c3 in some capacity and then come down on a2. However, I would have to reckon with a3. And I'm just thinking uh, if I have something forceful there, like bishop takes and then queen takes, but I'm not seeing the follow-up. So I'm kind of leaning in this direction right now. Unless I can make this work, but I'm not seeing the follow-up to that. So yeah, let's go knight d4. We attack f3. Still get to unleash this. I do kind of block the bishop, but don't be surprised if the bishop is further unleashed. Knight b5, something like that. Yeah, these, these roadblocks are nice if you get a blockade there like that. That slows the opponent down significantly. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Says hi from Ireland. Keep up the good work. Where's everyone checking in from today? Let's get a quick uh, geographic check here. Where are you guys tuning in to Lee Chess Plays? Greetings to everyone around the world. I've said it before. It's one of my favorite things about the chess community is the geographic diversity of this game. Oh, amazing. Estonia, Finland, Israel, Michigan, Ireland as well, California, Montreal, Norway, Argentina, France, Belgium, Switzerland, Brazil, India, Lithuania, Vienna. Amazing. <laughs> Just incredible. I wish we had one of those viewer maps where you can you know, visually see where everyone's from. Do you guys want me to sack my queen? I'm going to sack my queen. This is not a good decision. Normally, I would play knight b5, but this looks really fun. And because you guys responded so enthusiastically to my question, we're going to sack the queen. Botswana, Indonesia, London, Hungary, Turkey, Ukraine, Brazil, the Netherlands, Phoenix, Hawaii, Queens, NYC. Okay, I'm going to sack like this and then take here because the knight can pivot back here. I'm just, I'm in love with my dark square bishop right now. That's why I'm doing this. That's why we're playing this way. So what do I get? I get uh, three minor pieces. The knight is landing on C3 with check, which means I can take their rook whenever I want. I can also go after A2. This is going to be real difficult for white to defend. I mean, per pixel doesn't have a lot of much of a choice here because no other move really makes sense. So let's take. This bishop's very well defended. All right, give the check here. Now watch out. Got to play king c1. You can't step into the discoveries. Let's pick up this pawn. Let's come back, check. And you know what? I think I have so much control here. Well, let's play this one. Let's bring the other knight in. I think I can almost play like this, but now I get the knight check in from this square. The knights are just having a field day. Now I can take the rook, or I can take um, the queen, go after the queen. Let's go after the queen. Check. Take this one. Oh, that was also under attack, but take mine. Now I got to win this time scramble. Okay, thanks for the game per pixel. Interesting one. I think uh, you've looked at this opening before. You know what you were doing in this line. This is an interesting way to handle it. So knight c3 and then d4. So you've done your homework, my friend. Very good. The, again, the queen looks super awkward on d2, but sometimes they do fianchetto the bishop, in which case you could argue the queen is well-placed because it facilitates castle and queenside. So interesting that d5 is the best move here. I would not have predicted that. 
So I guess if knight takes d5, I take here, and this gets the bishop attacking the enemy bishop. I kind of alluded to a similar tactic. And if pawn takes, knight takes, and again, there's issues here. I'm going to keep that little trick in mind. Yeah, as played, I was kind of criticizing your um, g5 move. I didn't like g5 here. Look at this. The engine thinks you're doing really well here, plus 1.7. It says knight ge2, but especially also h5 if you want to unfurl the attack soon. Because, again, if you play h5, I have a hard time blocking with my knight. I can't really do that so easily. When you go g5, I think knight h5 is just a very convenient blocking move, although you're still better, to be fair. Yeah, and apparently this, this move's no good. Knight ge2, which reinforces here, also guards g3. Ah, okay, I definitely missed this. So remember I was debating between knight b4 and knight d4 here? The engine's calling for this one, and I see what I missed. Here, rook takes? Idea if bishop takes c3? I think I, I'm think I'm going to take here. Look at that move. And if takes, there's checkmate. Here or here? And if takes here, I guess I just have an awesome position with an attack towards the king. Threatening mate in two now, once that bishop has been eliminated. Wow. What if take here? Then just take back, I guess. Okay. And we got the dark square pressure. Ooh, so knight before was better. What does it think about the uh, queen sacrifice? Let's see. Completely unnecessary by me, but it looked fun. Oh, it doesn't like it. <laughs> All right, this game was played a little speculatively. It does not like this. As scary as it looks. Oh, you know what I missed here? I missed that I'm actually missing a rook. I think I miscounted the material. <laughs> White has one extra rook compared to me. <laughs> so that enables White to defend. It's still not easy. Queen c7. Then White's king has a little more running room. But yeah, I, I can't recommend rook takes c3, queen takes c3 when there's other moves available. Like this. Uh, knight b5 looked pretty good to me, although apparently not best. All right, thanks for the game per pixel. Fun one. Iha, you're up, you're up next. Good luck to you. Oh, you're per pixel, PR. Okay. Have you studied that variation before? I was speculating that you must have. You played it well. All right, let's play like a Nimzo setup. I'll play standard here, knight f6, e6. Cool, yeah. I remember our last game was tough as well, so keep, uh, keep improving. The Nimzo Indian. All right, um, I think I want to go c5 here. Bishop g5, I, I would love to play against regularly from the black side. I don't think it's like the best move for white. It gets played every once in a while, but it doesn't really address this situation. I think now I'm going to throw in h6. And, hmm. I feel like I should take and then play d6. I think that's how this sort of thing goes. And you can try to set up like a dark square pawn blockade against this bishop. And, whoa, that is a really loud car outside my window. Um, in true Nimzo or Jinji Indian fashion, you can try to pressure these pawns in the long run. Like queen a5, knight e4. Mm. Yeah, let's go e5 straight away. So I'm spending a lot of pawn moves, but that's okay because I want to I want to lock the middle of the board and then focus on playing on the wings. Let's go g5. I'm tempted to play this move, but I actually don't think that's the right approach here. I'm going to play bishop f5 instead and try to control these two squares. I think that's just a more sensible way to go. Now, a very common blunder here would be bishop d3. Bishop d3 is going to allow a fork. e4 or take, take, and then e4. So this is a test for Iha. Yeah. And unfortunately, they failed the test. Again, it's natural. They want to oppose this bishop. It looks like a good idea, but uh, it just runs into the fork. 
And again, two ways to do that. I could have taken first and then played e4. We're going with this one. Actually, ah, you know what? The way I play... Yeah, okay. Iha refuted my sacrifice. I should have taken first and done this, because now if I take here, they're going to take my bishop. Well played. Well played. All right, let's take. I got cocky. I got cocky. Again, remember how this game can humble you in a hurry. If you miss one thing, you can go from being super confident to uh, despair in a matter of moves. I might even be worse now. It might be the case. Let's play queen e7. We might need a mod on the YouTube channel, by the way. There's a bit of spam going on. Hey, John, have I ever played against Jan Gustafsson? Yes, I have. Yeah. Not in a serious game, but I've played him in like a blitz, a blitz match before. He is very tough. Quite a knowledgeable player. Doesn't play too often, it seems to me. I think like he still plays a little bit in the Bundesliga in Germany. Um, but yeah, he's extremely knowledgeable, super experienced. Um, let's go here. I'm going to hide my King a little bit. I could play knight e5, but I kind of feel like this Bishop doesn't have a whole lot to do other than trade itself for my knight. Do I listen to the chicken chess club podcast? I don't. Should I? It's probably pretty, uh, pretty informative. Who's on it? So it's Jan Gustafsson. I feel like Peter Heine Nielsen is also on there. Yeah, I can play 95. I kind of don't want to, though. I'm going to continue hiding my king. Because I feel like I can win this pawn. Knight b6, queen d7, queen a4. Let's go for that plan. Laurent Frosinet, uh, Peter Heine. Ah, okay. Cool. They got a nice lineup. What do they talk about mainly? Is it just current events in the chess world, that sort of thing? What do they cover? Okay, now I can take this one, finally. Can I take here? I think so. I'm just looking for tricks. I don't see any huge tricks that should bother me, so I'm going to take. Pre-move this capture. The d6 pawn could be hanging, but I actually don't think White can take it. I think they're going to get mated if they do. And now this defends here, also attacks the rook. So this should be GG. This rook is now kind of frozen, isn't it? It's stuck. Let's go b6. Both pieces are highly restricted. You see how I have all these pawns on dark squares against the dark square bishop? We like to see that. Yeah, White can barely move a muscle here. Let's just bring the king up. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue walking. All right, thank you for the game, Iha. Yeah, interesting moment there where I didn't think there was a difference between the two move orders. But uh, in, a, in a tournament game, that would be a very sloppy mistake on my part. But be careful. Anytime you're developing... Two minor pieces to the same rank with one square in between. If there's any hint of a pawn fork, be on high alert because that is such a common pattern. I got it wrong, though. I played this right away, which apparently still gives black an edge, but you found, you found out why. It's interesting. Bishop B1 is better than Bishop C2. But you found out why that uh, why this wasn't so good for me. Oh, and I still had an attempt here. To do this. Ah, that probably explains why bishop b1 is better. With the bishop on b1, white can escape this pin by going queen a4 check. Yeah, I was not considering bishop g4. Yeah. But definitely cleanest was to go here and then e4. That wins a piece, no problem. So, yeah, I think you should probably develop the bishop to e2 sometime soon. Looks like knight d2 is also a reasonable move, but I, I honestly don't really like these positions for white. This whole bishop g5 setup. I think they call this like the Leningrad variation. Um, I don't know. If I played the Nimzo regularly for black, I would be 
very happy to play against this regularly. Because white has the doubled pawns and the bishop pair isn't so effective for white. Thank you for the game, though. Okay, Kamal, you're up next. We've never played before. Good luck to you, 1697. Kamal, itch. All right, what have I not played in a while? Let's play a French defense. Okay, I will check that out. I'll check out that Chicken Chess podcast. Bishop B1 is borderline cheating. That would be an impressive move. That would be very impressive. <laughs> For someone to find. Okay, advanced variation. Ah, and we get this uh, gambit line. Let's go bishop d7. So you can't take the pawn yet because there's bishop b5 issues. Now I can take the pawn. I'm going to do it. I know a little bit about this gambit. Not a whole lot. But um, let's see how white handles it. This is the milner Berry gambit. Hello, sad. No, you're right on time. You can still get a game in, no problem. Absolutely, absolutely no worries, my friend. Okay, now here I probably will play either a6 or maybe knight c6. I'm going to bring the knight back. This may not be the best move. I don't really know what to do against knight c3. As far as I know, they usually take first and then play knight c3. So, yeah, I'm just not quite so familiar with this move order. A6 for me is generally pretty useful because it rules out knight b5. How much longer will the stream go? Uh, about an hour and 15 minutes. So we've got plenty of time still. Now let's go here. And I want to unwind. So you can see how it's convenient not to have to worry about this. All right. Um, D4, knight a4, I guess, is going to be the answer. Okay, I'll buy that. Let's go. Let's go all the way back here. Now, if this were Bug House, I might be in trouble because if White got a knight, if their partner passed them a knight, they could land it on d6 and they'd be smothered mate. <laughs> so that could be trouble, but fortunately, this is conventional chess. Oh, yeah, feel free to send me a challenge. Absolutely. Ever consider an international chess tour? You know, I think it'd be really fun to travel all over the place and not even play tournaments, but just like hang out. I know there's some streamers who do that. Um, it definitely looks really fun. Requires a lot of planning, a lot of time off. Uh, money, of course. You know, actually, one of the most interesting accounts I've read of someone doing that was uh, Grandmaster Walter Brown. He's a U.S.-Australian Grandmaster. He did that back in the... Um, like 1970s, he did like a simul tour across the U.S. and just went to like city after city and gave simuls and gave lectures. And he was just like hammering them out. He would do like, you know, three or four of these, five of these in a week. And he wrote about it in his autobiography. It seemed really, really interesting. So I thought that would be kind of fun to do. Maybe someday. Okay, let's go here. Still defending this. Knight takes e5 is an idea. I do play Bug House from time to time. Yeah. Walter was an interesting player. Yeah. Very interesting guy. Okay, so I can take here. Do I care about bishop f4? I mean, I can go bishop d6. I think I can capture this pawn cleanly. I'm going to do it. It's a pretty nice pawn to capture because white has to worry about h2 threats in the future. How many chess books have I read? Oof. That's a hard question to answer. I mean, probably cover to cover. I probably read, I don't know, 30 to 40. But I have maybe two to 250 chess books. <laughs> many of which I've just paged through in the past or read bits and pieces of them. That's a very common thing. Chess books are super easy and addictive to buy. But I will say, I have not really bought any chess books in the past five years or so. I really stopped buying them about five years because I just realized that I was never getting through them in their entirety. 
And if I buy a book or a course or some sort of chess resource nowadays, it's mostly just to support the author or, you know, if it's a friend, like support something that they're coming out with. Oh, I'm way down on time here. But that said, I do love chess books. I have a lot of classics. One of my favorite chess books is uh, Life and Games of Mikhail Tall. Love, love, love that book. Okay, John, focus. Do not flag in this game. I cannot let my unblemished Lee Chess Plays record for today go astray. Okay, White's blockading. I feel like White's going to crack soon, though. I, f I just feel it. Let's see how White deals with that one. This is probably not even a good move I just played, but that's fine. It's going to clarify some things. Let's go. Let's take. Oh, I got the queen, though. We got the queen. F3, I take your bishop. We get another queen. Take. Check. And checkmate. Whew. All right, GG. Thank you for the game, Kamel. Thank you, GG. Let's see if you had an advantage somewhere. Yeah, and I'm not really too familiar with the theory here. Uh, how common is knight c3? Could be very common for all I know. No. Okay. What I thought at the time was actually correct. Usually white is taking or playing knight bd2. The immediate knight c3, I mean, it doesn't look like a terrible move. But no master games at that. Probably there's games in the Lee Chess database. Yes, lots of them. I played knight c6. That might be kind of a weak move. It appears so. Not the best. Yeah, you know, knight c3 might be worth a shot in the future. Just to get someone out of book. Wants you to play bishop e3. White does have a certain grip on the position here in the middle game. It takes me a while to unwind. Looks like you played this largely correct. I thought knight c5 maybe wasn't the best. Bishop b6 looks like it's better. Yeah, probably if you're going to play knight c5, you should take the bishop. So I think after, let's say around here, I felt like I was doing pretty well. And I think now you definitely have to guard the e5 pawn, maybe bishop f4. Thanks for the game, though. Tough one. Okay, Delta. Delta function. Good luck to you. Let's play D4 here. You got that book because of my recommendation, Trudging Through, but a great book indeed. Yeah, it's, it's a really fun one. Life and Games of Mikhail Tall. Great book. I could have played E5 there. I probably should have done that. But okay, we'll go queen d2. We'll play this conventionally. Knight c6. Mm -hmm. What's my process for choosing between move orders and time trouble? Um, you know, I don't have a process per se that I could outline for you. However, I will say you generally want to uh, play secure moves. You want to play moves that coordinate maybe overprotect. Um, time trouble is very tricky territory to make critical decisions, as in decisions that can you know, vastly affect the evaluation. It's just kind of hard to do that sometimes. Uh, you might pay the price. So I would say you want to you over-index on like solid, uh, logical decisions that don't risk a whole lot unless you're confident about taking that risk. Let's go F3. This rules out knight g4. Just kind of secures things. Also, I think when it comes to time pressure, if you have the discipline, it's very good to start playing quickly before you're in really bad time pressure. So I have uh, an IM friend who told me like 20 years ago, he's like, yeah, what I do when I have less than, um, when I get down to about 10 or 15 minutes on my clock, that's when I start playing quickly. I don't wait till I'm at five, four, three, two minutes to start playing quickly in a tournament game. I start playing quickly when I have 10 or 15 minutes left. Then I have a little bit of a buffer if I need to make a tough decision before I'm truly, truly in terrible time pressure. I always thought that was an interesting approach. It's hard to stick to, though.
How much ELO do you think you lose trying to commentate while playing? That's a great question. Um, I've thought about that many, many times, especially because I've been playing quite a bit of Blitz lately. Um, I would say on average, I probably play 50 to 150 points weaker, but it depends a lot on the day. Maybe upwards of 200 if I'm really distracted. Let's go here. I'm happy he's taking this pawn because this, in theory, should make it a little easier for me to attack. But first, I'm going to rule out um, any sort of knight g3 business. Could have also taken and just played this, but I'm going to try to stop knight f4. Yes, this, this game is rated. Absolutely. Okay, takes. I think I should take with the knight, again, just to control these squares. I mean, Delta might be doing okay here, but I'll be curious how Delta defends this. This is, this is tricky for Black, because now G4 is heavily on the cards. This knight might have to come back here and defend, which is a little scary. If I can kick it again, like knight G3, G5. Ooh, okay. Now here, I have a common refutation. If you saw the refutation of this right away, give yourself a pat on the back. If I go G4, Black can play Queen G7. But I have this move, fortunately, and there's a pin here. We get the pin in. Pin it to win it. Go back. Okay, so now I'm just up a piece. Let's try to convert. Let's try to convert this position. Go knight c3. Jump in here. Protected. I think I could take this pawn. It looks a little scary, but like rook c8, knight a6. Eh, it may not be necessary, though. Yeah, you know what? Let's just play a4. I think this gives me much more control over the position. And then take with the knight. Much more of a stable reaction, you know? Now we'll go knight here. Mm, okay, let's take. Take, take. I don't see any tricks. A little reinforce. Take. All right. Um, let's go here. And now I just need to get rid of the back rank ideas. Let's first go here. Now I can unpin, fortunately. All right. Thank you for the game, Delta. Yeah, this is um, a standard position that we reached after knight c6. I was actually looking at this the other day. Um, I think bishop h6, I can. the move order can be a little tricky here. f3 is a useful move. That's probably like the slightly better way to play it. Because if I do this right away, sometimes knight g4, like after takes takes, knight g4 can be annoying. Um. So, yeah, strictly speaking, this might be the slightly better move order. Because if you go e5, take, take, I can try to trade down and then win the e5 pawn in the end. This is an important thing. So, yeah, that, I think in the future, I got to remember to play f3. I played this a little bit, not a whole lot. But, um, yeah, if you play the London or Jobava London, then you'll want to... You want to look at this sort of stuff for both sides, really. I am following in Richard Rapport's footsteps, though, so how bad can it be? <laughs> Mr. Rapport played Bishop h6 in this position as well. I think has played in our game 
maybe you can defend a little more securely somewhere around here. But I will admit it looks unpleasant to me. Ooh, and g4 right away is better. Even if you go knight f4, ah, do you lose a piece here? No, just queen h2. Aha. Queen h2 and white will not be denied down the f down the h file. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, apparently this is just very good. And if knight g3, bishop takes g7. If you take the rook, I go here. Aha. Uh -huh. And then your knight's probably getting trapped. The white will be up a piece in the end. Got it. And if you take, of course, queen h6. So some tactical stuff to look at there. Thank you for the game. Who do we have next? Skug Somorum. Good luck to you. Start streaming in a pink suit like Rapport. <laughs> I feel kind of bad for Richard Rapport. Like he never seems really happy about his play in the games after in the interviews afterwards, right? It's a tough thing as chess players. Like you we're we're in a we're playing a game that has such a um fine difference between good moves and bad moves and um a game a move that might save a draw versus a move that loses but i genuinely feel bad for him sometimes cuz he's very very hard on himself despite playing such cool creative unique chess did i watch the i am not a gm final yes i did a little bit I watched the beginning part of it, the 5 plus 1 portion, and then some of the bullet. I missed, I missed the 3 0. Okay, and this is such a common trap. E5, E4. Again, it's the same thing as earlier in that game against Iha, where I'm going to get in the fork. This time, there's not going to be any tricks. We've actually talked about this exact nuance before, Queen E8 on Lee Chess plays. I'll pose you guys a question after the game. We'll see who's been following the streams of late. Alweezy says, I think it's insane how long Rapport went without an official sponsor. He probably has some sponsors, right? But maybe not to the degree that he would he would like or is like truly viable for him. Uh, that matches, let's say, his value. And he switched federations recently, too. I think he does he play for Serbia now? No, Romania, I think. He switched from the Hung Hungarian Federation to Romania. Maybe he didn't have a good rapport with the sponsor. Get out. Get get out of here. Go. Leave Flintlock. <laughs> Leave the dad jokes to me. <laughs> I'm the one with the big time youth pastor energy here, not you. <laughs> you guys are too funny. Do I have a satisfying refutation of the Stafford Gambit? I played D3 plus H3, but there are still some tricks I have trouble with, asked David Mays. Great question. Well, I'll tell you the line that I often just mention to my students and show them some variations on. So um, it'd be easier for me to show this on an actual board. But e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, knight c6. So most Stafford players want you to take there, right? They want you to play knight takes c6. I personally think d4 at that moment is just a great practical idea that gives white a better position without the usual Stafford mess. So instead of knight takes c6 on uh, move four, playing playing d4. And there's some relatively easy variations to know there. Like if black plays knight takes e4, you go queen e2, and black has trouble down the e file. If they play knight takes e5, d takes e5, then knight takes c4, you can play either queen d5 or bishop c4. In both cases, black has to be careful on f7. It's more so like white who has the initiative rather than black. So that's one good option.
But yeah, it's not strictly speaking the best one, but if you don't want to go into the accepted variation, it's still plenty good. If you want the plus three and a half as you're talking about vindictive, you got to be willing to memorize and remember a lot of lines. Which is fine. It's probably what you should do if you really want to improve. But uh, not everyone's cup of tea. Let's take this first. I'm going to eliminate this one so I can go win this without allowing knight takes f5. But the time situation makes this a bit of a moot point. Okay, thank you, Skug, for the game. Yeah, so you just you walked right into a typical trap. Always, always, always watch for that. I'll say it again. The two minor pieces on the third rank, or, or any rank, really. Uh, if you have two minor pieces on the same rank with one square in between, watch for a pawn fork. Even if the pawn is further back, we can springboard it up. Now, who remembers? I posed this exact question to you guys last week, or maybe the week before. Who remembers why queen e8 is the better way to set up e5 compared to the obvious rook e8? I'll pause for a moment and drink my coffee while you guys have time to answer. I think we're on roughly the same delay, by the way, on both the YouTube and the Twitch streams. Defend c7. Well, that would be a downside of queen e8. Yes, it's because of bishop g5. So if you go rook e8, and let's say white castles allowing e5, White can get out of this. White can avoid losing a piece because of capture, capture, bishop, g5. e4, knight takes e4 using the pin. Or just the immediate bishop, g5 after e5. And that's why we like our queen here, right? We, we get the same position here, but not sneaky, sneaky. Bishop, g5 doesn't uh, affect black whatsoever. They just continue with e4. There's no pin. If takes, black will happily take back without losing their queen here. You see the same idea in uh, the King's Indian attack from the white side. Sometimes white plays the, the King's Indian attack with queen e1, and there's a similar philosophy. Also, sometimes rook e8, if there's enough traffic here, you can end up losing a pawn when you advance e5 by a queen trade, like a queen trade being inserted at the wrong moment. So just a little tip for you guys on that sort of thing. So yeah, watch for that in the future, Skug. Better to put the... Uh, Bishop on a different square, like maybe you should go to e2 when black's setting up here. Or when this comes, maybe you should play e4 or something like bishop g3. Take the sting out of e5. Thank you for the game. All right, Drat, you're up. Um, let's play c4 in this game. The English. The Ponziani works pretty well at your rating. I think the only reason to play the Ponziani is because you could make some joke about your opponents losing to a Ponzi scheme <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I think that's the only compelling reason I can come up with to play that opening. Hopefully that helped, David. Uh, you were asking about that Stafford solution. Uh, that's the one that I've seen to be very effective. Again, it doesn't absolutely maximize your advantage, but it gives you a good position without, with like, I don't know, a tenth of the usual craziness involved in the Stafford gambit. H3, just a useful move to stop any bishop g4 or knight g4, so I can put my bishop on e3. <clears throat> your current... Lee Chess 45-45 League is called the Ponziani Scheme. That's a great name. <laughs> Ponziani Scheme. I was reading about Charles Ponzi, who Ponzi schemes are named after. He's going down one of those Wikipedia binges. We'll see how Drat handles this. F5. Seems like Drat's setting up for F5, but I don't know that they'll actually play that. Let's go F4 ourselves. Hmm. A lot of tension in the center now. Interesting. 
All right, let's just go queen d2 to start. Black could keep this symmetric with queen d7, trying for takes, and bishop takes h3. Yeah, it's nice to like try to add some sort of further pressure from the outside by playing g4 in these setups, but I don't think that's quite going to work. Let's just play king h2, so if ever takes, I don't have to worry about this pawn hanging. I like this so far. Hello, Florida JP. Greetings to you. Thank you for tuning in on this Sunday. Yes, always a pleasure to have you. Cheers. Ah, uh, yeah, David Mays. Yep. Right, you got to play some awkward positions if you want to fully accept the Stafford Gambit. Like, it's borderline losing for Black, for sure. But uh, no doubt, you got you to gotta muck around if you want to maximize that advantage. Should I go here? It's inviting a sacrifice. It looks kind of scary, but it's the principled move. All right, let's give Drat a, sh a shot here. Drat's getting low on the clock, so maybe I can induce a tough decision. Okay, they decide not to take me up on that offer. So let's now go knight g3. Ooh, maybe this is a bad move by me. We'll find out. I think maybe now bishop takes g4 would have been interesting. I'll take with the rook here too. Maybe I should take with the rook. Yeah, I have a trick. I have a trick in mind. John, do you follow Blitz Champs? What is Blitz Champs? <laughs> I guess that's your answer right there. Are you talking about the Speed Chess Championship on chess.com? Hello, Chundin. Yeah, so I'm trying to set up some sort of bishop h6, rook takes f6 idea, but black isn't exactly falling for that. I could play g5 to try to force things. Um, knight e4 makes sense too. Knight e4 though, I gotta watch this bishop coming here. Let's play g5. g5, maybe knight d5 coming. Seems annoying for uh for white. I get these monster bishops screaming down the board. I like it. I like the look of it. Now, it's not, not winning or anything. That's for sure. Let's go here. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Send the knight back to d7. Very cramped position for my opponent. They're trying to open things up. But now I've gained substantial time for the attack. H6, possible threat. I did not see that, though. But I can take here. Uh, and this will be mate soon. All right, GG Drat. Thank you for the game. Tough one. I think there was a lot of tension. Interesting position in the middle game. Let's just very quickly check if the engine wants you to take on g4. Ooh, it actually does give g4 as a top move. I thought you might go for this. I thought you were going to give in to temptation and capture because you get two pawns. Also, you knock out my dark square bishop. That seems super tempting. But apparently it's no good. Uh, and then here... Here, apparently, it is good, or at least the best option, even though it's plus one for white. Maybe not. Maybe not. Engine can't decide. I don't know. I felt like you had chances, but the engine's actually approving of my play. I'm a little surprised by that. Because I thought you were playing pretty reasonably. D5. Uh-huh. D5. Breaking open the center. It's complicated. It's a complicated middle game. 
Hard to hard for both of us to play with three minutes on the clock. Yeah, thanks for the game. Oh, that was you, DeMaples? Nice. Thank you for the game. Cheers. John, it's an event where NFL players play chess for chair. Oh, yeah, I did see a little bit of that the other day. I did see that. Rock Robinoff. Uh, let's play E5. We'll play the King's English. Um, okay, I'll go D6. I'm going to play like a reversed closed Sicilian of some sort. Could be in Keto, but also I kind of like this sometimes. D4, the immediate D4. I don't know if I should take that, actually. I could advance E4, but I'm not, not so thrilled about that position, uh, potentially. Let's go here. I'll allow a queen trade. Take, take. That's why I want to swap, but I get to keep my pawns in the middle. And now let's play c6. I think this is an instructive move. It keeps the knight out, also blocks the bishop. Nice little formation to work with. What's up, Asla Papa? Yeah, sorry, reverse Grand Prix. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, not necessarily a reversed closed Sicilian, because I think in the Grand Prix, you do put the bishop on the e-file rather than fianchettoing it. That is correct. Okay, again, do I want to play e4? I think in this case I will, because the pawn's a little awkward to defend there, so I'm going to advance it. Yet I'm kind of restricting some of the white pieces rather nicely. Even though I have all my pieces on the back rank, my pieces are going to come to life here in some capacity. Let's go here now. If bishop e3, I'm thinking maybe knight h6. Trying for knight g4. Mr. Fister, thank you for the uh, prime. It's <laughs> an interesting username. What's up, Sarnoran? Okay, knight a6. I'm developing both knights to the edge of the board. Maybe I'll come up here, try to infiltrate. Ooh, now I'm getting some squares to work with for sure. If b4, I might even be able to take and then go knight b3 and double back here. Do I want to give up my beautiful dark square bishop to achieve that, though? Debatable. Debatable. You know, I'm going to keep the uh, dark square bishop. I think White's position is cramped enough where I'm going to be better just doing this. But I was, I was mighty tempted, I will tell you that. All right, let's castle now. <laughs> well, Mr. was using their prime. We got to, we got to applaud them for that. Hello, Jamie. Yes, hope you get a game in this session. Ooh, okay. Undefended bishop alert down here. I think I can take on f2 and unveil the attack. I can also take this one or this one as well. So it's kind of a matter of which pawn do I most want to capture. This one makes sense to me because the e3 be pawn becomes very weak. I think that also makes some sense too, but I really like the look of this. Unveil the threat. Take because knight g4 now becomes a pretty significant idea, too. Dark square bishop is having a field day. Yeah, this is big time trouble for white. Take I think white's gonna lose even further material pretty soon. Let me see if I can figure out some punishing move order here. Ah, uh, like take, king takes, and then f4? Very tempted to do that. f4. Mm, maybe it's not quite winning, though. Let's just go bishop e6. We'll bring something into the game. Both these knights are looking pretty rough right now because this one can't move. This one's under attack, and it doesn't have a lot of great options. I guess it could go to b1, attack the rook, but I'll move off. 
I do have to be a little careful about my time, though. I am a bit low. King h3, I play here with check. Okay, so white's going to hide. Um, That's just double. Double up. G5 might be coming. Um, Let's go here. We'll take the scenic route. H6, G5. Those pawns are coming at some point. They're getting pushed. These are superfluous knights. You see how two bishops side by side, close proximity to one another, really complement each other because they occupy different diagonals. Knights, though, they often get caught like that where they take away one another's squares. The concept of the superfluous knight. You can have superfluous rooks as well. That's also a thing. Now watch if this knight moves. Oh, I get bishop g2 checkmate. Case in point. Complementary squares that it's controlling. Thank you for the game. Appreciate it, Rock Rabinoff. Yeah, I feel like the opening was probably not so great for you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the early exchange of queens. It doesn't look like it's particularly challenging for black because white doesn't have much pawn presence in the center. Sometimes this English pawn on c4 actually isn't that great if the knight's coming here and black can put a pawn on c6 to control its movements. But actually around here, the computer's liking your position. I'm a little surprised by how much it likes your setup, actually. Bishop e3? I thought go here. Hmm, f3. An ugly-looking move, but it really wants you to do this. That's interesting. I guess trying to turn the tables on me and say, actually, you have the weak structure. So if take, take. Huh, I'm surprised. I mean, this doesn't look like a plus one or one and a half position to me, but the engine's pretty adamant. I could even go f4 here. G takes or Bishop F2. Hmm, I'm surprised by that, e that eval, but it may be the case that I've given up too many squares and I'm a little overextended myself. So that's probably the moment where you lose the, uh, the thread. E3 is just pretty passive. Yeah, this Bishop looking very locked in for the rest of the game. Oh, and it does approve Knight D3. Yeah, again, I could take here if I want, but I feel like I lose some momentum with that. Yeah, computer hates it. Could take and then go here, but it's saying, nah, that's too much too much trouble you've gone through to, to win just one pawn. You've moved your knight around a lot. Now the dark square bishop's really strong. So thanks for the game. Okay, who do we have next? Pixie Mr. Goo. Good luck to you, 1557. Thanks everyone for challenging and tuning in today. We have 170 viewers on YouTube, 325 on Twitch. Love it. Excellent. We've got about 500 viewers total. Pixie Mr. Goo, are you there? Apparently not. You can always re-challenge. We'll go to the next one. Brugu. Brugu144. You are up next. I am undefeated today. Someone's got to take me down. We need someone to do the trick. Let's play F5. Let's go Dutch. This is rated, yes. Putting that rating at stake. My blitz rating has taken uh, quite a beating sometimes in these Lee chess plays. <laughs> but it's okay. Oh, this is aggressive. Gambit. I don't know about this gambit. This looks a little sketchy to me for white because if I ever play d6 cleanly, that knight is kind of out on a limb. I mean, maybe you go back to g4, but yeah, you probably want to have an easier way to attack the e4 pawn after you've gambited that pawn. Someone shine the gold cat signal into the sky. Yeah, gold cat, they're calling for you. <laughs> he's challenging. I. He's watching right here. I know he's watching. Now, queen h5 looks good, right? But I go here. And on knight takes, I take and the rook is defended. 
The rook is defended, which is the problem. Um, which way to go? King f8. Yeah, I think king f8 is fine. Mm hmm. Interesting move. Um, let's see. So I can take c3 even, and then maybe take here. That seems a little bit greedy though. I'm gonna play more so to coordinate. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here. And then on queen takes e4, I'm going to play knight a6 and just develop. That's what we'll do. Do I play poker? Yes. You know, I used to play a lot of poker back in the day. I'd say from about 2003-ish is when I first learned to play poker. I was in high school. To 2000, maybe 10 at the latest. 11, perhaps. Probably 2011. That's when I kind of stopped playing Poker for the most part. I still play every once in a while with friends or play online. Ooh, I missed this move. I missed a tactic. That's a discovery on my bishop. I think I still like my position, but we'll see how this goes. There was actually a big poker match uh, last night with Magnus involved. It was on uh, the Botez Sisters channel. But from what I saw, it had a lot of technical issues, unfortunately. They were having massive issues with the audio and stuff. Should I go here or here? Let's go here. We'll hit the queen. But yeah, Magnus, it, Magnus is out in Vegas right now. He played in the main event of the um, World Series of Poker. And he was playing a cash game. And there were some notable personalities in that cash game that took place last night. Like Phil Ivey, who's uh, one of the best poker players of all time. But yeah, unfortunately, the live stream of it was an absolute disaster. They could never figure out the technical issues. I think they ended up deleting the stream. Okay, let's go here. This is an interesting position because I don't have any pawns on the king side and white has three, but I've got a lot of a uh, possible initiative here. Now I got to watch knight d5. So let's see if I can encourage my opponent to castle queen side. Yes, please challenge the 3 plus 0 if you're going to challenge. That's right. Okay. Knight b5. So I can take b2 here. I'm probably going to do that. Yeah, let's go capture that pawn. Barugu is, has successfully avoided the traps I've been trying to set up. At least so far. I think this is still anyone's game. Rated is okay, yes, if you want to challenge rated. What's up, Aryan? I see you down there too. I'm watching you guys. <laughs> okay, Rook D1, good move. Um, Let's see. Let's play this one. And try to coordinate a little bit. Very tense position. White can take either of these pawns if they want, but I might land bishop c3 if I get a chance. We'll see. How did I become so good? I would say getting serious about chess at a young age definitely helps. But a lot of time spent playing, studying, thinking about chess over the years. Okay, here I could maybe take and then queen g3 is interesting. Although there's queen f2 at that point, my bishop hangs. Tricky, tricky. Let's go here. This is a hard position to play for both sides in time pressure. But yeah, I think white is looking a little bit slow here. I agree. Let's take like this. Now this is a threat. It's actually equal material after all that. But now I get the check in. We can take. Take in. The wheels have come off. Check. Yeah, we'll just trade. <laughs> I like the effort. <laughs> I like the uh, valiant effort here, Burugu. 
GG. All right, thanks. Yeah, you found, um, whoops, I did not mean to miratch. I, you found the uh, D6 move, which I completely missed. Yeah, that got you back in the game. I probably should play bishop take c3 here, huh? Yeah, that's a good move. Queen g7, also good. I'm minus six here, but that one really gave you some life. But I think overall, this gambit, not so great. Doesn't look like you get much out of this. I think this whole sequence, too, probably not enough. You're just not attacking with enough pieces here. Maybe you originally went for queen h5 thinking the rook was undefended. That's, that's a typical situation where this would work. But yeah, unfortunately, that rook is held. But good job uh, confusing the issue from here. I mean, you're not that much worse, according to the computer, around about this point in the game. Very tough, though, with limited time, too. Thank you for the game. Okay, who's up next? Womble Chess, good luck to you. We got the 1500 with the question mark. 1573 bullet, though. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of context. Good luck, Womble, if you're there. If you're there, can you accept my challenge? Well, I'm accepting challenges randomly, so feel free to challenge me. We're gonna abort this game because Womble is not present, evidently. But yeah, you have an equal chance of getting selected as everyone else. Okay, D Moore, you're up. All right. I don't know. I'm just in a Fianchetto y mood today, I guess. I'm playing a lot of Fianchetto systems. And I'm being rewarded. All right. White well, could have played knight e2 there because uh, then they would be defending the, the rook in the corner. So at least they'd get some material. Let's go here. Fifteen hundred with a question mark, always a risk. <laughs> What's up? Uh Blur said, by the way. Oh, uh Jason was asking about two thousand eleven Black Monday or was it Black Friday? It was Black Friday, yeah. That was that's a reference to when online poker was banned in the US pretty much overnight. Yeah, that, that's pretty much when I stopped playing. I lost a lot of enthusiasm for poker at that point. It's still fun, but um, I've mentioned this before. Like One thing I really appreciate about chess is that it's such a fulfilling game just to play with like absolutely no stakes. You know, like poker is a great example where if you take away the money aspect of the game, it loses like a ton of interest for most people. You know, like there's not too many people just playing poker purely for nothing. Maybe you play like with your friends or something. You have a family family or friends tournament. But even then, you're usually playing for like $5, $10 buy-in, whatever. But chess, I mean, the vast majority of chess is played with no stakes whatsoever or expectation of, of that. Even in tournaments. Like I, I know people who consider themselves to be basically chess professionals who know that they don't make money playing tournaments, but they love the game so much, they do it anyways. And they make, they, they get by, you know? If they get their expenses paid, they're happy with that. They just love playing the game. And of course, there's a whole spectrum of games, but to me, chess is like one of the, the purest games that you can always play and you'll always be interested in. Uh, just for the sake of how beautifully it's constructed. Oh, you guys are debating the Fianchetto versus Fianchetto pronunciation? I used to think it was Fianchetto as well, but I'm pretty sure it's Fianchetto, at least when you're pronouncing it in English. Um, let's go here. I'm going to try to set up a cheeky threat. There's f5 here, to be honest. 
There's really no fairer game than chess. Yes, it's a very balanced game. I agree. If you gesticulate with your hands and then saying it, it seems like the Italian way. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Bianchetto. <laughs> that sounds more authentic, vaguely. <laughs> I would love to learn Italian. I want to study that language sometime. Let's go here. I'll try to hold F5. What an expressive language. Mm -hmm. Now, my mating construction, I was going to go here, here, and then try to set up a checkmate like that. Yeah, thank you for the game. Yeah, it just went south for you very quickly after um, the early bishop development. So, you know, d3 on move one, yeah, it's playable, but I'd recommend in the future d more. Play your pawn up two squares in the center when you have the white pieces. e4 or d4, go for it. Occupy the middle of the board. You have the advantage of the white pieces. Be a little more assertive with uh, controlling that middle of the board. If you can occupy any of these four center squares with one or two pawns early on, that's fantastic. So go for that. I'd actually recommend playing e4 first if you're a bit newer to the game. Okay, thank you very much. Who is up next? Active member. Very good. 1853. Let's play another d4 game here. All right, let's play knight f3. Knight c3. Ooh, all right, we'll go main line. We'll go main line semi-slav. Bishop e7 is a natural move. It's certainly playable, but I think it's a little bit worse than um, d takes c4 or h6 or knight bd7. Those are all the conventional options. Now take, this is usually a slight mistake because I get to take here in one go. Usually white's pretty happy about that. I'm going to try to do an old Kramnik plan that I saw. There's a game in his uh, autobiography where he plays this setup extremely well. Okay, let's castle. We'll take here. We're going to accept and isolate upon, if necessary. Both pronunciations are acceptable. Okay, I'm going to do some research on that. So what I'm going to I'm thinking about doing is bringing this back here. I also maybe could have considered looks bizarre, but I maybe could have considered this move previously, although it looks a little ticky-tack. Okay, knight f8, that seems like a decent defense. My eye is drawn towards like take take knight d5, but I don't actually think that does much after this move, you know? Seems a little a little thin in terms of my compensation. It does almost feel like I have a tactic here, though. But I cannot pinpoint what that would be. Let's just go rook fe1. And now knight g6 would be a very easy way to lose the game here. Because I have queen takes. Okay, here, again, it feels... Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I see a tempting move. I don't know that it really wins much, though. Take, 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 knight d5. But I think ultimately it just leads to a position with a better pawn structure for me. Nothing special. Man, I really want to play that. Man, man, man. Bishop g3, knight e5 also comes to mind. I'm not satisfied. Let's go knight e5. I think this kind of forces bishop e6. Ooh, knight takes R. Yeah, black's really playing with fire here. But it's still incumbent on me to find the refutation. But black really playing with fire. 
you know, it seems tempting to go here, but I might actually just pivot the bishop back. This is one of the main reasons I'm kind of pursuing this development path. So let's do that. I got to say, though, I sometimes get in really bad time pressure in these situations when I have a lot of tempting options. <clears throat> Rule of Lee Chess plays. Yeah, yeah, if I see a speculative move, I got to go for it. I know, normally I would, but... Yeah, here too, so many good options. Let's take this one. Knight takes g6, also strong. Well, let's take this one. I'm just catching up on the YouTube chat. What's up, Zachary? Nice to see you. Um, let's take here. Okay, check, check, check. I guess I'm just going to take this one. We're going to go for the material. Maybe check was more forcing. Okay, so this position's winning. Can I win it with 19 seconds left, though? That is a key question to ponder. I should be able to. I'm pretty decent at bullet, but I welcome the challenge. I feel I'm going to get a fork at some point. Or mating net. We're going to go for the Rook F7 mating net. There we go. Nice. Vukovic's mate. Named after a Croatian I am, I think. Vukovic. Uh, thank you for the game active member. Yeah, I don't know if I executed this attack correctly. Again, it seemed like you were playing with fire. Like the early capture here. Not advisable because I can take in one go. You should, if anything, try to wait for my bishop to develop and then take. So I have to spend two moves to capture. So you could play like knight bd7 would be one useful move. Maybe b6. Um, also, queen c7. I think this alignment could present some issues. That said, I spent a lot of time trying to find something good. And I don't think I ever truly, truly punished you until maybe six, seven moves from now. Yeah, Vukovic's mate is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's a nice one. Bishop g3 is good here. Going for the pin. Okay. Why is that? So after bishop d6, we trade everything here, and then what? Oh, rook takes d6. Yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> Definitely didn't see that. That's nice. Luring black into this. And then here, you don't even take yet. You play this first. And then take... Because if black captures, ah, yes, elementary. All this happens, and now queen g6. Elementary. Easy stuff, right? <laughs> That's a long sequence. Okay, so yeah, there were definitely improvements for both sides. It says I should take with the knight here rather than the pawn. I thought you should definitely put this bishop on e6. If you do that, it's apparently not even that much worse for you at this exact moment. Again, it looks shaky, but... Now here it does, this is a flashy line. I saw this line, but I didn't see that it was amounting to very much other than um, an advantage in pawn structure. In a classical game, I probably would have gone for this, but this, despite the fireworks, didn't actually seem like the best to me at the time. Okay. And then here, queen f5 is better, f4 is better. Queen f5, wow. It's just a visually an odd move. I can kind of see why it likes this, though, even though it aligns the queen with the enemy bishop. If this knight ever moves, bishop takes f7. Also, there's existing pressure here. And I think the point is I'm threatening this move, so if you play something random, then I'm cashing in and everything's going to collapse here on e6. 
So we can, we can analyze this game for a while, but I'd say overall active member, think about that setup in the opening a little bit. You might want to, if you play the semi-slav, look at one of these moves instead. Those are the main moves here. Knight BD7 is probably the easiest one to play. You actually um, send the queen out to A5 and you have, a, have ideas like Knight E4 and Bishop B4 here. Maybe even a cheeky D takes C4 if you ever can open up an attack on the bishop, which happens pretty, pretty frequently. All right. Let's try to get in maybe three more games. We're uh, coming up towards on the end of the stream here. And to know, you're up. All right. Common Lee Chess plays opponent. Let's play E4. All right. Chris says, I see your point with poker where there's an element of luck. I don't see what that it is a factor in chess or luck is called a blunder. Will my opponent play Stafford here? No. Oh, okay. This variation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, Antono. You might be studying Camille's course on Chessable. Camille Plicta. Okay, I got to be careful because there's quite a bit of theory here. Um, yeah, let's take. Even though this does win a pawn, there's a fair amount of theory. Let's go here. And I think I should castle now. Let's do that. Yep. And I think at this point, black is threatening to capture the pawn back. So bishop f4, I feel, is going to be met by g5 followed by h5. That's probably some sort of principled line. Rook e1 is tempting, but I think that allows my opponent to capture back. So you know what? Let's, let's go down this variation. I'm just kind of curious. Ah, you immediately take. Okay. And now knight takes, I guess. All right, all right. I'll play this position. Let's go um Let's go here. Now we're just playing chess. Black got the pawn back. But yeah, it's really interesting. Knight takes e4, usually considered a blunder as a queen e2, but it, it's actually like borderline playable for black. And as you can see, like I don't know the strict refutation of it. Um I would bet the refutation is just like somewhat better for white. Maybe a half pawn. Okay, but now yeah, this is that was a big blunder blunder by Anton. So yeah, in conclusion, knight takes e4 is playable. It is a playable option. Let's see, Anton. Thanks for the game. Let's see what the Oracle says. We'll consult the engine for a moment. Yeah. See if there's master games from here. I'm sure there are. Quite a few, actually. 120. It should be 5. Knight c3. Okay, so most people play knight c3 here. Castle's not considered best. Okay, so I'll keep that in mind. Knight c3 is something to look into. But you can see the stats. There's actually quite a few draws in this line overall. I thought you were going to go g5. That seemed on point for this. The engine's mentioning other moves too. Interesting. Oh, did I? Ah, I believed you. I believed you on Knight Takes E5. Who saw this in the chat? Let me look at your messages. Nobody appeared to mention this. Oh, you can't say it now, Artie Bear. You can't say it, say it at this point. It only counts if you say it in the chat at the moment that I fail to play the best move. <laughs> But yeah, I can go here. I think what we both missed is that when black takes, looking to take here, I have the in-between move. Always look at the in-between moves, folks. Bishop takes d7, check, a showstopper. Black has to waste time taking, and then I take, and we see that white is up a minor piece. So nice moment of mutual blindness there. But actually, this position looks fine for black. Again, a6, or there's a variety of moves that black can play, apparently. Queen f6, good here. So if you're interested in sort of a maligned variation that has been reevaluated with engines and some further master games, you can look into this move. It's funny because at the pure beginner level, when black plays this way, they often just lose after queen e2. And if they copy you, then of course they're going to lose their queen. Or the classic, I remember when I used to give a lot of 
simul simuls for uh, amateur players. They would move the knight, and then you get the classic knight c6 check and win the queen. That would happen so often. Um, but it is interesting that, that black can play this way. Yeah, intermezzo gesticulates, you know. Intermezzo. Okay, thanks for the game. Let's do another one here. And then we've got our blindfold game coming up too to round out the uh, session. Heading to nowhere, you are up. Yeah, you, have you been studying that, Anton? Hello, Kayluth. Heading to nowhere is getting nowhere in this game. They are AFK. They are not present. Oily whale yams. Good luck to you. That sounds like, a, like an auto-generated username, you know? <laughs> or like, you know, on the Twitch clips, when you make a Twitch clip, it'll have something like that in the URL. That's what it sounds like. It's a play on Ollie Williams. Who is Ollie Williams? Am I showing my ignorance for that? Sounds like a British person. Oh, it's Family Guy. <laughs> is he the weatherman on Family Guy? Yes. Yes, I remember him. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, this variation. Yeah, this is a pretty good line. I'm not going to lie. This is a tough line to get an edge against. I think white's like mildly better here, but it's nothing special. Xbox gamer tag, auto generated tags, right? All right, let's go 92. I don't know about bishop e6. Like, that seems a bit premature to me. Um, I'm going to go knight f4. Normally, I wouldn't go knight f4 this early, but to attack the bishop, I think we're going to do it. Do I have any GM norms? Yes, I have one GM norm. I got it from a tournament back in 2013 at the St. Louis Chess Club. So, boof, coming up on 10 years. Fortunately, they don't expire as of yet. So, I uh, don't have to worry about losing them anytime soon. Okay, here I should definitely be better because I got the two bishops. Even though black was able to undouble the pawns, I'm not sure how favorable that is because this pawn structure looks a little fragile to me. Yeah, St. Louis at the St. Louis Chess Club. I think I got it because there's a Starbucks right across the street. That's the only reason I was able to score so well in that tournament. <laughs> the Starbucks is right next to one of the largest kings. I don't know if it's still the largest king or largest chess piece ever, ever constructed, but it's at the World Chess Hall of Fame. I saw that in France... Somewhere in France, they're also constructing a very large chess piece, which might be bigger than the one in St. Louis. I don't know if, it, if it, that's the case, but... You should participate in a GM Norm tournament. You know, I'd love to, but um, I'm, not, I'm not in tournament shape right now. At least I don't think I am. Who knows? Like Maybe I would have a good result, but I don't think so. I, um, I've, been, I've not been dedicating the proper study time to truly excel in tournament chess. I think I would perform passably well. Like, I wouldn't absolutely tank. I've been playing a lot online. But I need to spend a lot of time working on my openings. I need to get myself into playing shape again. Otherwise, I would just be a tourist in those tournaments. Ooh, oily whale yams. Not looking good. I have the discovery here. Let's do this one, just to be a little cruel. <laughs> Sorry. Check. Yeah, I think you were a little disoriented after this structure occurred, but don't put your bishop on e6 this early. That's that's just not necessary. Um, yeah, you want to bring the dark square bishop out, bishop d6, castles. Yeah. This presents a target. Looks like it has been played by some players, but um, 
Kaina now playing g6, you probably just don't have time for that. Looks like black does this and then probably castle pretty soon hereafter. Or queen c7 guarding the f4 square. Interesting. Okay, thank you for the game. Shall we fire up the final game of the session, folks? Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This is, this is always a pleasure. We're going to play one more game. Again, apologies. I got to issue my usual apology to those who did not get a game. I do appreciate you guys challenging no matter what. I just clicked this random button that says accept random challenge. Um, so rest assured, if you challenge, you will get chosen at some point. Also, I do occasional uh, viewer streams where I, I just play viewers on my own channel, which is just my name, twitch.tv slash John Bartholomew, if you want to check me out. So I do some of those. But uh, thanks again to everyone for tuning in around the world to the chess plays. We're going to play one more game, so don't turn off the stream yet. Let's go into my preferences. Blindfold. Everyone has this option, by the way, if you want to test your blindfold skills on Lee Chess. And if you want to uh, follow along and see a blank board just like I see, you just keep it dialed here to the stream. You're only going to see the move list. And that's it. Oh, I'm playing a 22 4. All right, this is going to be really tough. It is casual. We're playing slow. Good luck, Shlo. If you want to follow me, go to my username, Fins, and follow me on there. All right. We really got to be dialed in here. I'm going to play my usual opening, Slav. Exchange Slav. Okay. That I don't mind because it, it keeps the structure relatively stable. I should be able to keep this in my head a little bit better. E6. Okay. Um, let's just go Bishop D6. This might actually produce kind of a pedestrian type of position on board. Just as a warning. Yeah, let's take go queen here. Bishop d3, fine. We'll go h6. We got to stop the threat on h7. White has the half open h file right now, but that is a common situation. Let's go bishop d7. Let's see how keen white is to try to attack down the file. I don't think it's a great idea for white to try that, but they might try it. Knight a4. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go rook c8. White is intent on using the c5 square, evidently. But could that get white in some tactical trouble? Maybe. Castles. Wait a second. Isn't white blundering knight takes d4? Wait a minute. No, 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 no. White never put the queen on c2. Still, though, knight takes d4 might be playable. I think it is, actually. This is still playable because I take down here. Big, Look at this big-brained idea. Take down here, and then I take the knight. Okay, this is not a unique idea. I've seen this before in games. I've had this tactic before. But I'm glad I recognize that it's still playable despite the uh, changing circumstances. Here we go. We're up a pawn. So that, rook, that whole idea was a deflection. All right. So queen c3. Let's play uh, e5 here, probably. And if knight f5, probably queen e6 or queen d7. Let's go queen d7. No, that drops e5. Let's go here. Keep this pawn guarded. It's a bit tricky. I'm not threatening rook c8 because of knight e7 type stuff. It's a bit tricky, but I think I'm still good here. I need to speed up, though. I think I mostly see where stuff is. There's like a pawn or two that might be a little hard to visualize at present, but I think I mostly see where everything is. I 
Queen B4, okay. Ah, that's a little bit sneaky because um, I see the point of that. Good idea. Should be seven ninety seven. Darn. I actually may not have a good response to that. Could that just be good? I don't see what to do here. I think I got to play here. Looks awful, but I don't see another good move. Queen B4 is nice. All right, now I really got to focus. Still up a pawn, but that's not going to last too much longer. There's still some chances, though. I think Queen E8 was the only move. It's really weird. Otherwise, 97, Knight G6 wins my rook. Yep, takes there. Okay, let's go here. It's going to be a time scramble, which is not good for me. Chances, though. E4? Really? Okay, let's take this. Go on the attack. Where's that rook? I think the rook's still on F1, right? Time pressure. Let's attack F2. Or maybe maybe I can get queen h5 in. Queen h5 is the angle here. Mate threat. I think I'm just mating. Either that or white's got to give the queen. Queen takes g4. Is that the only move there? Boom. Oh, no. That was blocked even. Woo! There we go. Took down a 2240 in the blindfold 3-0. Made in three. Look at that. Yes. I got the pieces organized. White was running down the board, but I was able to do it. Nice. Thank you for the game, Shlo. I know it's uh, a bit of an imbalance, like playing someone who's not, you know, playing their conventional way. I mean, kudos to you. Queen B4 is a great move. I just, I didn't foresee the problems with that move. Yeah, that's the only good move for White. And I really had to burn a lot of time here. I burned like two-thirds of my remaining time trying to figure out what to play. Because the problem, folks, is if I go bishop d7, there's knight e7 check, and then knight g6 picking up the rook. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. That was a tough one. So queen e8. Yeah, apparently e4 is playable as well. Um, cause I, I guess E4 probably gives me access to H7 cause the bishop's blocked. Let's see about knight takes D4. Yep. Knight takes D4 is good. That's a good trick to remember in these positions because the white queen is overloaded and I'm threatening to take here with check. So if white plays like this, you insert that one with check. What was wrong with bishop C6? That would run into the same problem. Knight E7. 97 check, and the rook is going to hang. In this case, it's even worse because uh, white can take here. And that rook's undefended. Since when is my name LeeChess.org? I'm just streaming on the LeeChess channel. They kindly allow me to do that for LeeChess plays. <laughs> a lot of other streamers stream on here too. It's a collective thing. Supporting LeeChess. Cool. I actually played this quite well at this point. I'm going to give myself credit for this. Queen e5. Okay, maybe queen takes f5 is not the best, but under the circumstances, I'm going to give myself a pass. Rook c2, best move. Nice. Yep. Because it dawned on me that I've actually set myself up perfectly to deliver mate on h2. Unfortunately, I was able to find that idea. All right. That's one of the... Um, 
blindfold games that I'm most happy about that I've ever played on Lee Chess Plays, I think, given the strength of the opponent and some of the uh, nuances I had to foresee here. But thank you very much to Slow for the game. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Lee Chess Plays today. Always a pleasure. That's okay, Pandora's box. There's no stupid questions here. <laughs> thank you guys on YouTube as well. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks, Ariane. Ariane, we did not get a game today, but uh, we'll play again in the near future, I'm sure. We're going to send this off to someone. You guys all have a great week. I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks as always, guys. Bye.